All right, dog. Let's get to this IndieWire article. People were mad about this one on Twitter. And to be honest, I really hate the culture of, like, journalistic outlets posting stuff on, uh, like, in links on their Twitters and then just, like, people habitually roasting them, like, kind of regardless of whatever's in the article. You know, they just, they see, like, a, a compelling headline and they just have, like, a gut emotional reaction. Um, that's, like, so 2014, like, Kotaku in action type stuff. It's just ridiculous. Um, incredibly, incredibly goofy. I hate that. Hate that for the human race. But this time it was kind of deserved. Uh, people were were really roasting this one, and I see why. Because this IndieWire article is from the 29th of March, and uh, it says, despite the panic, generative AI won't be on the big screen anytime soon. Even early adopters say that while Gen AI contains many possibilities. Using it to create our final big screen images isn't one of them. So I'm not going to read this whole thing where I'm not going to, you know, we're just not going to dwell on that. Um, yeah. So this is from a, uh, a Sora on a short film. Uh, as I recall, this image right here was created with AI, which, you know, certainly the, it's technologically impressive in a lot of ways, you know. Um, when you zoom in on it, you find a lot of problems with it. Like the, some of the faces are just straight up melted um there's uh, uh like some words that aren't words uh on these signs here you know stuff like that just like weird weird little things but you know compared to to the technology of 20 years ago obviously technologically this is very impressive however uh something that this this article brings up um is uh for example this is a, a, a woman named uh, Diana Williams. It says uh, she's a producer, former Lucasfilm executive, now CEO and co-founder of Kinetic Energy Entertainment. Um, so she says, it's a fraught time because the messaging that's out there is not being led by creators. Uh, it's really being led by the business people and, pu and by publicly owned companies. So that's true. And I, I agree with that, but there there is a weird tenor of this article that, that gave me a very strange vibe, even setting the title aside. Um, uh, so here we go. Uh, repeating a familiar sentiment, Brahmi said the common thread with each tech disruption is filmmakers adopt these tools to tell stories. I started understanding with AI that a computer can help me uh, create way faster, iterate faster, and get there faster, he said. Speed, that's what you hear over and over again as the real benefit of Gen AI imaging. By eliminating the friction time consuming, uh, friction of time-consuming tasks and collaborative translation fail, uh, fails, it lets an idea move slowly from a creative's head to something that others can see. Um, some of the, the qualifications here, and by the way, uh, I, I've seen this even on like uh, job applications, where if you, like they say outright, if you submit anything to them application-wise, or if you um, like perform any work for them when you work for that for a company, some companies will just terminate you for that. They have a zero tolerance policy for AI that is becoming, uh, you know, I don't know if it's here to stay that sentiment, but it is definitely becoming a contentious sentiment that a lot of people have. And the article brings that up. I would never use AI in my final project appears 15 times from conversations with animators, visual effects artists, post-production and virtual production supervisors and filmmakers who use generative AI tools. Um, yeah, it's, it, it, this is, this is a really strange article for a couple reasons. I mean, um, something that it, it says, um, like these artists and artisans believe AI images will always fall short. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. The article tends to, seems to have a lot of focus on like use and quality which are definitely real conversations to have about generative AI. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that it, they're that anybody's wrong for wanting to talk about like the actual quality of the outputs of uh, one of these programs. I completely understand that. But um, the thing is, like, I I don't think the major contentions with AI are about the outputs. Um, you know, people criticize those because they're what they see. I really think. The biggest contentions people have with it are the inputs. The idea that, you know, people 
will have been uploading written work, uh, drawings, uh, paintings, what have you, uh, videos to the internet for years. This has been just, it's people just putting stuff out there for years to the point that for a lot of industries, it's become the norm. Um, for some, it's mandatory. And yet some of these uh, AI programs just rip stuff from online without the consent of uh, whoever owns it or whoever made it. And then can be used to kind of recreate it, right? So the issue that people have is they say, hey, that's my project. If you did something, which I think would be the most immediately analogous to this, which is you you ripped somebody's project and you put it in a like a database, like a, a, a stock photo database. And this does happen, by the way, and it's not it's not a good thing. I've seen this happen before um, where an artist just makes something and then it just ends up in a, a database where people pay for like stock photos and stuff. That's bad. That's that's actually pretty bad. Um, you know, it's one thing if somebody puts something online for people to use and people use it, you know, on the level of like, I don't know, like it's a meme and somebody puts it in their YouTube video or it's like a, a background and somebody puts it on their desktop, you know, uh, there's different levels to this. But I think if you're uh, using it uh, to in a database to train your program, which is then going to make things based on that training information, um, then the, then that's where people draw their ethical issue. And that's the first of the ethical issues. The second, which it felt really weird for this article to not address, is that if the AI program just gets good enough, you literally can use it to replace people. And even if it doesn't get good enough, it can still be used to do that. Which is why I had such an issue with this article, especially in the title. It won't be on the big screen anytime soon. Yes, it will. It was in Late Night with the Devil. They used, as I, as I am given to understand, uh, several still images in the film that were AI generated. Um, I mean, so I would not go to see this film personally. Um, nor, by the way, would I, would I, yeah, not that I have, not that this is my choice, but nor, by the way, would I work with somebody given the choice who, who made a decision like that. I, far from it. I, I think that that's really scummy. Um, the defense of it, uh, so these are from the, the writers and directors of the film. Um, they're uh, siblings, it says, from Australia, Cameron and Colin Cairns. This is the, the statement to Variety magazine that they gave. Quote, in conjunction with our amazing graphics and production design team, all of whom worked tirelessly to give this film the 70s aesthetic we had always imagined, we experimented with AI for three still images, which we edited further and ultimately appear as very brief interstitials in the film. We feel incredibly fortunate to have had such a talented and passionate cast crew and producing team go above and beyond to help bring this film to life. We can't wait for everyone to see it for themselves this weekend. Now, I want to be clear about something. Um, there are principles in the production of art, like found art, for instance, where people take things from the world and they rearrange them to make things. Um, sampling is, is a case of this in music. I don't want to say that, that that's all wrong, and I don't want to make an argument about AI that throws that stuff out as well, because I think it's valuable. What I do want to say about this is, first of all, I think it's I think it's a little uh, painting in, in a very charitable light, the images that were actually used. Um, so like, for example, let me pull these up here. Let me actually get them. I don't have them to hand. I just realized I don't have these images to hand. But I saw somebody post them on Twitter. Uh, so let me see. There's a few articles of this, but I haven't been able to find. Yeah, there was a one of these articles mentions that it's in a, a, like a, a Twitter post, but I don't know. 
Um, okay, yeah, here we go. Da, 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 da. I've at least got one of them here. We can at least see one of them here. This is what it looks like. Okay, um, so that quote, let's just, let's just go back. Um, these directors said, uh, experimented with AI for three still images, edited further and further, appear as brief interstitials. Um, they make it sound, first of all, they make it sound like it wasn't in the film <laughs> with that phrasing. Like, well, we experimented with it. Um, but then they admit if they do ultimately appear, but just very briefly, um, I don't think that's the issue. I think that the issue is that normally in, in human society, this would be something you'd pay somebody to do. And also if the quality is, is part of the sub part of the, uh, you know, conversation, uh, what's going on in this image, man? I don't know how well you guys can see this, but, um, the eye, the, the face of the skeleton is a little inconsistent. Some weird things are going on with the bones and the shoulders. Um, I don't know what's going on with the pelvis here. I don't. I don't think that's what human skeletal pelvises look like. Um, maybe it's supposed to be stylized. Uh, definitely, the fingers on in the human body are not single bones that curve, uh, and there also aren't like a bunch of them of different random thicknesses and lengths sp sprouting off of the hand in solid pieces at, at random angles, as seen in the left hand here. Um, also in the background, there is a just just a skull on a spine. Just a skull on a spine. Um, uh, <laughs> the jack-o'-lanterns look look like weird and and melted and kind of cut up. Um, it's it's not a hundred percent clear whether they're all supposed to look like skulls or whether a couple of them are supposed to be skulls and the other ones are supposed to be jack-o'-lanterns. Um, you know, does that jack-o'-lantern have uh, three eyes and an ear? Look, it. we'll be here all day going over the quality of this image, right? The fact of the matter is, I think that setting aside that... um that I think the, the coverage of this film has been very, from, from journalistic outlets, has been relatively forgiven, or relatively forgiving, given like the actual quality of the images, which is awful. Setting aside that, however, the IndieWire article is the one that really ticks me off the most. Uh, and the reason for this is specifically because they talk about it like this is something that's never going to happen. This article was published on March 29th, this variety piece, where's the date on this? March 21st. So eight days before there was major media coverage of the fact that this headline is false. And they published it anyway, and I don't see any retraction or clarification uh, attached to the article anywhere. So, misinfo? Like... Not and not just misinfo. Maybe they would defend it on the basis that, like, okay, maybe a couple films will do it, but for the most part, what we actually mean is that whole films won't be uh, uh, generated with AI. Um, not necessarily what the title says, uh, and also the the um, little uh, tagline here where it says using it to create our final big screen images isn't one of them. First of all. Something that I think this article does do very clearly is it sets out the distinction between the fact that there were there were times when um, the use of AI in film was uh, and still is more about helping artists do things like you might have a program that helps you animate fire to make it more realistic or helps you animate uh, uh, whether it's computer generated or whether it's it's animated uh, more like conventionally like a 3D animation like a Disney project. Uh, when you're animating hair underwater i mean you know even people who edit youtube videos know that there's like a ton of plugins that you can do that just generate effects for you this is not the same level of thing 
past a certain point, we're not talking about a tool that you use to make something new uh, by helping you apply a method to what you're doing that you use piecemeal uh, uh, to help create something, you know, like a brush on a canvas. Past a certain point, we're talking about just like looking at the canvas and going, okay, be a film. And then it becomes a film because other people's films were fed into that. Or an image, looking at an image and going, okay, be this kind of image for me. And then it simply becomes that. At that point, we're dealing with a different kind of problem. And I think the issue here is that this article kind of brings up like, hey, look, uh, generative AI, it's not good enough to be in movies. Well, clearly that's no object because this is crap. But it was in this movie and this movie got a lot of positive press. So like, you know, <laughs> this ar this argument that like, oh, you know, generative AI, I, it can't actually end up in stuff because it's not very good. Uh, a lot of movies aren't very good. And a lot of movies have bad stuff in them, you know? Like, you might make the same argument where it's like, you know, everybody who's a part of this production crew, uh, they're really against uh, sexual assault. So obviously, Harvey Weinstein has never been associated with the film production. That doesn't make any sense, right? Like, at, at a certain point, you're just saying stuff. And I feel like people who make arguments like this, they don't get it, you know? I'm very sorry to Chris O'Fault, who, you know, what a... Sorry, what a name for a guy who's wrong about something. Um, but I, I, I don't mean to be rude, but this is this is very inaccurate. This is very silly. Some some editor at IndieWire should have caught this because this is not good. Um, you know, and should have caught it, by the way, it's uh, April 3rd now. So maybe within the four days after it, it being already out there, coming out at around, uh, it says 5.30 p.m. So I mean, assuming that's like my time, central time, you know whatever uh it, it's just goofy very very goofy that that we're in this um situation where we're having people make these arguments like well it's not very good so obviously it'll never be used in a film have you guys like seen movies you know there's a lot of bad movies right also a lot of movies kind of been made by una people with with very questionable systems of ethics and a lot of those people you know despite the fact that they're on projects with people who do have very good uh, ethics, they, they might be in charge of the people who have good ethics, which means they dictate who's getting hired and fired and who's staying on the project. Cass says, it's already being used. Yeah, Cass, I mean, I, I, first of all, I trust you on this, given that you, like, you've literally worked on, fil on films. Um, but everybody that uh, that I know, like, um, it's, it's one thing... Um, to like use it as like a plugin, like you're saying, or like uh, simplifying tedious tasks. But the thing to understand is that a lot of like the AI bros, from their perspective, learning to make art is the tedious task. So we've moved to a very different uh, uh, kind of era, I think, where now now we're just kind of replacing stuff. And uh, I think one of the concerns people have is that artists who normally would have gotten paid for stuff, um, even as we increasingly live in like this gig economy, artists who might have gotten paid for things before are, might be replaced with a machine that doesn't make stuff that's worse, does it make stuff that's less original, you know? Is it is it an overhyped piece of garbage? Those things can all be true, but it doesn't matter because that was never the object. The object of the, the companies is to make money. So if they can make money doing this, they'll do it. You know, and, and past a certain point, on a certain scale, we're just going to see a bunch of this stuff without any intervention. And I leave that, um, you know, whoever's job it is to intervene, um, whether it's a union, whether it's the government, uh, it seems like kind of a, a long shot in America right now, given how things, you can't even get people to, to build a bridge, you know. Sorry, that's not about the Baltimore thing. I just said bridge, and I realized, oh, people are going to think it's about the Baltimore thing. No, but I mean, you, you like, you just, you just can't, you know, you can't build a highway without it becoming like a, a whole political battle, because people won't want to spend money on it. People like infrastructure spending is is like a partisan issue now. So frankly, uh, I think we're we're in a for a bad time here in the states uh, going forward. But it's also seeing filmmaking as like a frivolous job that's not real work. And I'll note that most AI bros lean towards loving finance shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, I think that's to me the fascinating part is um, 
how it's it's clearly it's like coming from a lot of the same people who were like hawking crypto a while back and then nfts after that um i don't know it's 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 just a big silicon valley thing i think as well ai bro is a right-wing position imo and then working class people that don't know what goes into films think it's not real work yeah yeah economists log off hey i, I mean i like i like people who study economics um i'm just not a big not a big fan of like uh corporate jerkwads you know what i mean Well, it's not a good, not a good situation, you know. And there's a lot of films that I would like. I, I swear to God, I'll draw this line over anything, you know. Like I'm a big, uh, like Lord of the Rings fan, Star Wars fan, stuff like that. Um, I will not go see a Star Wars film ever again if they start using AI generation to just like put images or videos of things in the films. Uh, if I if I find out about it, he like. This better be the most clandestine operation that Disney has ever pulled. Uh, and I mean that with all the severity of its context. Um, if I find out about it, I I'm just not going to go see the movie, period. Um, you know, like, I I'm sure a lot of great people worked on Late Night with the Devil, like the directors say, but fuck off, you know? <laughs> like, uh, uh, you know, you, you do something like this, you put it in the movie. Now that is a quality of your movie. You made that decision, you know? Like if you put, if you put, uh, you know, if you attached, I don't know, name a guy, Woody Allen, Harvey Weinstein, you know? If you attached one of those guys to the project, I, a lot of people would feel like that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's not an, a, a completely like amoral issue. Uh, it's, it's, it's got moral implications. It's got social implications, you know? Sorry, I keep going for that low-hanging Hollywood fruit because there's a lot of sickos, but, but I mean, you know, frankly, I'm just going to wait for, uh, all movies from here on. This destroyed the idea of opening night. Yeah, imagine paying, uh, like, because you have to, you have to really pay to see something in a theater in a way that you don't necessarily, uh, in other circumstances, um, at least not quite as much if it you know if you're already paying for a streaming service and it winds up on there well then you're already paying for it in a lot of cases um yeah did you see that marvel is using an imprint of stanley's brain and ai for a comic series um uh, well i mean not getting my money i'll tell you that much uh not that i have a lot of it to throw around but i you know i if it's if it's if it's made with generative ai i'm just i'm just not interested you know and it's one thing, like, again, the AI tools. A lot of people have, like, when we talk about AI, right, we should just throw that term out at this point. It's not artificial intelligence. It's not. It's not It's not Terminator, Skynet, you know, iRobot, data from, from next generation. It's not that. So we could just throw that out, because that's branding. That's that's some deceptive Theranos branding type stuff that that, frankly, is being used to cheat people in terms of their perception of what the product actually does. Um, what it really is, is it's like automated replication. That's what it is. It's, it's taking the creation of a thing and automating it, right? And it is one thing to have a plugin or a tool, right? Because we all have this. Pull out your phone, you know? Go to type something. You've got predictive text, okay? We all have algorithms and a ton of the stuff that we do that can aid us in producing things. But ultimately, you are still picking all of those words individually. Now, you might be influenced a little bit by what's being predicted for you. It might help you out. Maybe you'll avoid making a typo or something. But it is different. And I, I have to stress that I think fundamentally there's like a difference between like a Theseus' ship kind of thing where you replace a bunch of the boards and you go, is it really the same ship? Versus if Theseus is like, hey, that's my ship, and you give him a different ship, complete, like just a completely different ship, but you made it out of all of the boards from his ship because you destroyed his ship, and you, he was like, hey, I didn't give you my ship to do whatever you wanted with it, and also, uh, now you're just giving me something different, and I'm supposed to thank you for this. I don't know. That's a stupid analogy, but it's, it's hard because it's a new, it's kind of a new era in terms of technology, it's it's a new thing to worry about, and I think that's one of the reasons why people are spooked by it. There's no perfect analogy for it. There's there's 
there's definitely more perfect ones than than some of the stuff that I've said here today, but yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Real load of crap. Uh some of the people covering this issue are are really on something. Uh I do not even know. <laughs>